the first song. So go here on a new tab. I don't want to. Say it. Still moving. Okay. Oh. oh. So. So go here. <laughs> <laughs> It makes you sound like this. I want you back to make uh, try to try to share yeah. this thing. I'll figure out how to do it. Okay. 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 Oh, oh, for a sad nigga. I said, don't, I was about to say, don't you dare. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Cultivated Ignorance. I am Will, the host. I'm Mike, the favorite host. Hey, guys, hey, guys. Wow, this wow, bum ass here. <laughs> <laughs> you P.O.S. Yeah, you're going to walk over on me. Start walking over on me. Mike. Yes. Yeah, Start walking over on me. You good now? Man, just keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> As Mike, uh, Handles things lie. in the background because he sucks. Uh, we this week, we are joined by Mr. Thaddeus Wayne Jones Jr. I knew the first name. I did no, not know the last. Still <laughs> still <laughs> What's going on, brother? Like too. Thank you. Chill, chill. <laughs> so this week, we got uh, a dope show. We got a couple new things going on in the show. Some stuff we trying out. Hey, right I'm quick. here. <laughs> show over. <laughs> <laughs> and so, some stuff we trying out this week. Um, so this this week we're going to start a new segment where we kind of catch you up on the past two weeks of news as we are a bi-weekly show. Um, Bye. <laughs> loving stars in the building, trolling us while moderating as usual. Um, we haven't come up with a name with it yet. At first it was going to be like, in case you missed it. Then I was so like, then I was like, your black news, <laughs> your black right news. I'm gonna get sued. Yeah, I was like, black news in ten. News I one, <laughs> news one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're gonna be trying it out this week. But we're also gonna be talking about uh, a lot of things going on in film, uh, the representation in film. For some reason, we're talking about these Tyler Perry things. No, these Tyler Perry I stuff. Get a week later, two a weeks black later, filmmaker in the building to talk about how he feel about Tyler Perry's films and stuff. And if it helped, if they help with help, hurt the culture, in his opinion. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Who's the? Oh, it's, oh, it's me. Okay. <laughs> so, cool. All black people should love Tyler Perry <laughs> for everything he's done for us. Mm. Mm. No. How dare you? Mm. No. <laughs> Leave us, you betrayer. Oh. I'm gonna need him to get some better wigs on there. So. Hey. Mm. <laughs> That's the shade right there. Shade. Um. <laughs> Oh yeah, we're not doing the we're not doing the joints anymore. What, church announcement? Yeah, church announcement. Only church announcement y'all need to know is Patreon. Um, yeah, man. Real quick, we still got the Patreon popping. Um, we are starting to share exclusive content. I think we're gonna start like next this coming Monday. Um, we're gonna Will's gonna put together the um old episodes right from the yeah from the from the barbaric ooh, ages. Ooh. You gonna see y'all gonna see how far we came. <laughs> um, <laughs> you gonna get the beginning episodes. You can get some exclusive um, footage of me and Will from back in the day. I, 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 I saw, saw some of it. Yeah, I saw some of it. <laughs> We've been cultivatedly ignorant for a very long time. And so we got some footage from back in the day when we was just whew. when I used to wear well, I still wear crocs and flip flops. <laughs> I still wear crocs and flip flops. But we were both much smaller. Are you wearing all the socks? No. Well, back in the day. Right now, you better be wearing those. Well, back in the day. Yeah, I was. Crocs are very comfortable. They I mean, are. you put me on to them. You <laughs> <laughs> clear all that out now. You know what I'm talking Listen. <laughs> I ain't bringing no hoes. It's going to be exclusive content. And uh, we also have limited time offers for um, sponsorships, um, advertising. There's uh, different tiers. You can go on patreon.com slash cultivated ignorance. Get some super, super, super competitive price um, ads for your company or just for yourself. Just some shout outs for yourself uh, on the Patreon. And uh, this is on the pop right now. We had a couple people subscribe. We need a couple more. We try to get bigger studios. Try to get, more, to get more reliable internet. More reliable internet. We're not jinxing the internet. It's been, it's been on our side lately. Knock on wood. My mom always knocks on the head. So <laughs> I don't know why she does that. It's so weird. <laughs> but 
Yeah, man, it's gonna be lit. So patreon.com says culture and ignorance. See the offers, love on us for as little as five dollars. Count it five dollars. You can help only us. Only five dollars? Only you're still only scratch at that. Five dollars. What sexy when star does it? Um well those five dollars can help us. So look at car. So there's a little of five dollars you can help us change the world. So whatever you can donate. So that's what we do now. We change the world. We've been doing it for over two years. You now. sound like Amanda Steele saying that she was Martin Luther King. Oh, that sounds right. We'll post these Harriet Tubman um quotes that never actually existed next. But um uh, yeah, man. So I just want to shout that out. So yeah. You wanna talk about some trending stuff, Will? For sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we ain't gonna start we we ain't gonna start there. Um uh, <laughs> If y'all didn't see the Grammys on uh, what was it Sunday? Mm-hmm. Uh, Billie Eilish pretty much cleaned up the whole thing. Mm. Lil Nas X, Lizzo were nominated for a bunch of categories, but uh, and Lil Nas X beefing with uh, bro, Troy out here wilding. He wilding out. He was wilding. He is out here super homophobia wilding. Right. Troy, Tessa Troy ain't had a hit since I was in high school. Bro, no. No. Oh my god, he's such a nice guy though. I mean, he is. He's a nice dude. Not the gay people. Oh, <laughs> well, they gotta be gay and eat mozzarella sticks, right? Right, right. <laughs> How did he say? He didn't, he didn't just say, bro. My man said mozzarella sticks. Um, it looked like I ain't getting the um Grammy no time soon. If, if this is how I got addressed. He said, um, they've been had f words on. Um, I've been mad at F- Applebee's for having f words, eating mozzarella sticks in the commercials. Mm. Not my sons. Um, it was, it, was, it was bad. It was bad. Bad. Raise your son. Oh, he's because Tyler, Tyler the Creator guy, and he's a you know not admitted, but he's revealed that he's bisexual. He's like admitted to he's song bisexual. Right? Yeah. yeah. But I don't, I don't want to say admitted like it's a crime though. Like you admitted to being bisexual. <laughs> <laughs> he's, just, he's just owning who he is. You like, find, you is. finally owned up to it. I mean, I mean, he was so like, like come on, you didn't know Tyler the Creator. Was, come on. He I listen to every. I like Tyler's music, but I, I listen to yeah. a lot of his stuff. I was like, this fellas, he's got a lot of closeted, repressed, yeah, something. Especially that yeah. stuff at the beginning. You could tell he was angry about his sexuality. <laughs> <Fella, laughs> <ain't a, laughs> listen, fella ain't a cockroach. He was mad at his mom. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. you um, that? No, I do remember. I gotta get more into this stuff, but yeah, it's dark stuff, but I like it. The early stuff is dark. The, light, the later stuff is more experimental. It's very dope. Um, so Lil Nas X did win a. Best pop duo group performance for Old Town Road with Billy Ray Cyrus. Yeah. Um, Lizzo won Truth Hurts uh, for Truth Hurts. What was that? Best pop solo performance. Okay. I've had multiple people say that is one of like the most aggravating songs of all time. Mm-hmm. That's the only because like when they got to be why yeah. the established it's like, played it in the ground. Why are you it's like, always because like, you don't hear the J C Penny and fucking yeah. You, and that that thing about the uh, he played out for forever. I don't know about that. I, I mean. I like Lizzo, but, and I like the song. I don't think it's played out. I think we have a, a messaging problem with that particular song, in my mean? opinion. Which I, I mean, if we, I mean, really, want, I don't want to go at Lizzo, but you know, generally, uh, they're coming for you. Generally, she's she's doing the same yeah, thing that exactly. women women be upset about men doing, right? What's like that? generalizing every type of man into one group. Right, and and so if if a man did that, then it'd be like, oh, how dare you come at women like this? this, this, this. Like, keep it keep it a, a level playing field. Like, if you don't want people doing it to you, why are you out here singing and jiving and juking for it? Jiving and juking, jiving and juking, and singing. Why are you out here juking for it? Why 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 push forward that narrative when you know? It's, again, yeah, I know she's singing from her personal experience and all that stuff, mm-hmm. and kudos for all of that. However, right. I get what you're saying. I think the, I mean, I think the playing field is already unleveled, though, because you know, historically speak, speaking, men have oppressed women in a way that women have not oppressed men. So it's like in a way that they have it. Yeah, in a way. Here's here's the thing about that. We say men, but black men ain't repressing nobody because we don't own nothing. Nah, you, you can repress someone more than just financially or economically, and I Every, think they did when they are the earners in the home, and they've done it that physically, whole thing, they've done it sexually. Right. That whole thing. Is, Actually, black women actually uh, run the whole household. For one, anybody who tell you otherwise, not no. in every household. Every household. What? Every household. Every every household. No. And here's why: because when <laughs> if mom if mama shut it down, that's not how it was I my can't. household. That's definitely not how it was, was my say, household. 
And historically, historically speaking, when a man is like the breadwinner and it's the only one that's able to work like a well-paying job and a woman so is not. That's that's what we start talking about. Uh, we're getting off into something else. But that's how you start talking about the whole uh, no man in the household kind of deal, right? We're talking about, I uh, believe it was Linda B. Johnson when, you know, started to get food stamps and all of this stuff in the household. You couldn't have a man in the household. I'm, I'm talking about when the man is in the household, though. When a man is in the household, you got society um, on the other side of saying he ain't ish, he ain't going to be ish, blah, 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 blah. That comes into the household the same way. So if you, if, if you, if you uh, look at what everything a man does generally, and I hate to generalize, but generally, everything a man does is for the betterment of, mm, let's say this. What he thinks is. What he, right. What he thinks is the betterment of his household, whether it's his, his wife, his kids. A single man ain't got the betterment of nobody. He is all about himself. And a lot of people, a lot of men still have a single man's mentality when they get together with a woman. I heard a very popular podcaster, Courtney L. Sanders, um, shout out to her. She talk, said that a lot of she was like, I'm observing your relationship culture because I've been married for the past five years, been in my relationship for the past 10 years. And I see a lot of people say there's like a cult, there's like a schizophrenia in the culture saying niggas ain't ish. And at the same time, I want to be with somebody's son. This is somebody's son. This is me. <laughs> right. You know, and I want to find a man. But then also she's like, everybody wants these relationships, but they're not ready to like do the work, work. that it takes. They want to be married, but they don't want to be a wife. Or it's that energy. Husband. It's that energy. Like, so that's all I'm talking about. Like, said that. Why put that energy out there if that's what you if if what you really want it needs to align all the way across the board that energy that you put out has to align or else you're gonna have this whole mixed thing so when she you know what I mean like that's all I I'm hear saying. what you're saying and uh, I don't want to make this a whole topic within itself yeah I think a lot of times when women do put that energy out there like that it's kind of like to defy the men who are like that as well like you say like Meg Thee Stallion who me and Will are in love with who yeah. talks about you know dogging out men all the time. And you know, it's like mostly comes from like a rever role reversal type of standpoint mm -hmm. of like, I'm gonna do these niggas like they just have historically done us. Yeah, so I, I love Meg. Yeah. Oh, I love her. Yeah, she's but, like friend of my head, Meg. Yeah, friend of my head. She's, right. on, my, she's so. on my workout playlist. <laughs> yes, Meg. Yes, <laughs> do me dirty. <Yeah. laughs> That's a spend my money for you. Uh, also, Wait a minute, hold up, hold up. Yeah. The said. wife got the money now. We gonna, no, 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 I'm, just, I'm, I'm well, maybe. <laughs> also, if you didn't see it, uh, there was a lovely event that happened right before uh, the Grammys. <laughs> we can't let this thing go, bro. This beautiful Rock Nation brunch. I don't know why Mike didn't get us an invite. <laughs> well, I tried. The tickets, tried. Like, the tickets were like one billion each. I, I, I feel like there were not tickets sold. To <laughs> there were not tickets. It was like, an invite only. Like invite only. I'll take my email. It, ain't, it was know. every beautiful black person you've ever seen. It really was. <laughs> was like, and a couple hey. of sprinkles of white people. <laughs> Just little dashes of white. <laughs> well, white pepper. It, Salt bay. It was, it was a beautiful event. Uh, was, so much uh, black wealth at that party. Uh, you know, I think just the, the conversations that it had is really what I wanted. The conversations probably... It was just like dollar signs floating in the air. <laughs> it's just like one way to make money, another way to make money, another way to make money. Popping it back and forth. Yeah, man. Um, so yeah, next year me and Mike gonna be there. We in there? I was we speaking in existence. Yeah. We'll be there in some kind of pastel suit. We room, might be jesters, like there. making. We Bro, I, don't we'll care I'm, I don't care if I'm serving the food or whatever. I was gonna say we're we'll serving the food and telling jokes. Long as I'm soaking up knowledge. <laughs> Speaking of randomly, I'm sorry, I just have to add this in there. Like, my mom watches Ellen, right? So I'm, I'm watching, I'm seeing her watch Ellen, and they literally have a minstrel on that show. Like, there's a black what? guy who comes out and dances <laughs> and gets the white people hyped because the audience is mostly white, like mostly white women. I thought Ellen mostly did. No, she might do a little something, but he comes out first and, and he does the like, full jig. He does wow. the full jig, and I'm just like, wow. I just thought that was. So you talked about like you don't care if you even just dancing for them. It was like, nah, we ain't gonna do that. No, I ain't about I'm to pretty dance. sure he I'm, makes this me, me. Great right, right next to you. Black people, this black people. That's what's black people. But what do you think about that? We're I think about perspective, right? Representation, dancing might be his talent. So then, so then you, you, the perspective, right? We, we have to really look at it from a, a, a genuine perspective. If dancing is his talent, she's providing him with an opportunity. I looked at it that way. 
but then I also understand the history. Of right. It. I, I mean, the, the history, so through, the history might say one thing, but then you got to balance out. Listen, am I am I a slave to my history? Am I a slave mm. to the history of the culture? Wait, or can I do what I need to do to be happy and fulfilled exactly. in my life? And I think that's how we fight ourselves a lot because I know he got homeboys in this corner somewhere. Like, you, so you really out here dancing for the white woman? That's what you're doing? Yeah. yeah. And all these white women in the audience. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Ray Ray is somewhere like, man, yeah. you just sell out. Yeah. Shut out, man. He's still on the same corner. Right, they're for the white man. That's what we Let me hold $20. <laughs> I know you got it. I know you got it. Let me get a cigarette. And, uh, okay, so before we move on to the next thing, I got to say hmm. that Billy Porter is one of the most fabulous dressing men. <laughs> I have ever seen him in my life. On his head. My my wife put me on the Billy Porter, and I was like, "What man? What you got me watching this this pose thing?" And then I was like, watching it, I was like, "Okay, Billy, I'm all, all bro, right, bro, be coming out in the most dope <laughs> suits." And I feel bad when I use the word fabulous because I probably wouldn't use it saying nothing would. about no other dude. <laughs> but that's the only way I can describe it. It's just amazing. That's like, immaculate. That's the word I would use. He has an immaculate. My man had the motorized couple out joint, right? <laughs> We have some people who joined, and I oh, yeah. guess they've been on for a while. So we got Benjamin Anderson. I remember when he was. He was. Sandra Hamlin. Sandra. Sandra Carter. Karen's doing some amazing things. Absolutely. She's yes, Rose. She's what? speaking. She's a mad great proud of you, lady. Love you, Karen. Very Jennifer proud. Brown joined. Jennifer. Um, and Cicely Ann joined. Cicely. Like, let's ooh, see. Okay. Jennifer said. Can we still learn? Can Jennifer we, said. Can we tell? He married a white woman. Now, who are you talking about? Billy Boy? He married to a white dude. I was saying, yeah. He married, married to a white dude. He's not married to a woman at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was, I was wondering. Mike M- Michelle. Michelle. I, was, girl, I always like, say Michelle. Sorry. Sorry, girl. Did she take a call? She didn't take a call. Yet. Oh, we didn't see your catchphrase. Michelle, what you doing? That's all everybody. She, she said, come, come. <laughs> all caps. Yes, yes. We love you, Michelle. To wrap up, uh, your black news slash uh, stop stop get black, y'all black, black, black black news in ten uh, your ignorant news blackity black your ignorant news I like your ignorant news see I'm gonna write it down maybe we got a little bit of sad news a little bit yeah a lot of bit of sad news uh, if you've been living under multiple rocks uh, unfortunately Kobe Bryant has passed away mm. oh boy in the shocker of uh, the biggest shocker of all time for real um. He, he, his daughter, and seven other people passed away in a helicopter crash. Mm. Um, a couple people at my job, like older cats, have been saying like this is like the biggest sports tragedy yeah. in their lifetime. I remember a bigger one in my lifetime. I can't either. Me either. I really can't. It's just so crazy, man. And, uh, all the outpouring of love Bro. he's getting. Um, it's, man, it's, it's crazy. Like, I, don't, I don't know what to say about it. I can say firsthand, like, you remember my jersey I used to wear like every every week. <laughs> bro, it'll be one day a week. Yeah, that, 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 that yellow number eight jersey come out. Hey, we're gonna bust out of some time with the with the long five eight white tee underneath us. Um, Kobe was my definitely hands down my favorite basketball player. Um, he's the one that really got me into basketball. One of my fondest memories is seeing him play with um Shaq when I was a like how was that high school I think, and um I went to Charlotte. Um, I was doing my mentorship with the Charlotte team to play the Hornets. Mm-hmm. They beat the brakes. <laughs> no, that was a blowout. They beat the brakes right. off the Hornets, bro. <laughs> and I had the time of my life. <laughs> like, it was so many disappointing. Fans around me. So yeah, you wouldn't sure. root for the home team at all? I damn sure wouldn't. I was in there with my shiny ass jersey. <laughs> and, um, yeah, man, it was just beautiful. I remember so many nights watching the games, and he would hit them last quarter second threes to, to win yeah. the game, bro. It's, it's devastating, man. Bro, no lie. I remember like, I don't know, it was after Shaq left and like Paul Gasol was there. Yes. Bro, this, this nigga was the most feared man on the basketball court. <laughs> he was, right? Because you knew he could go off at any moment. He get the ball to Kobe every time. And you know he ain't passing, so. <laughs> <laughs> so. Kobe hit so many game winners. So um, many, bro. What did Kobe teach, teach you? Me, I, you know. I'm not a Lakers fan, but I will not, say, not many of us are. Right. But I, I will say. <laughs> That the fella was brilliant and he had a mind that was beyond just the game. You could mm-hmm. see that he was always, you know, calculating, calculating his odds, his chances, what I need to do. And he he was a a closer. You know what I mean? Yeah. At, at the end of the day, if nobody was gonna make a way, give me the ball. 
I got this. I got it. Y'all just sit down. I got this. I'm gonna, play, I'm gonna play all. I'm gonna play all these guys by myself. Yeah. But he taught me, you know, perseverance. I think is one of the one of the key things. Even when the odds are stacked against you, like just keep driving, keep driving forward. And mm-hmm. you know, it's sad to see um, people trying to, you know, besmirch his reputation now, mm-hmm. uh, where the man can't defend himself. That's the main. Um, but in the same breath, you have to be able as a fan to remember all the joy, all the good things. This man, his whole, you know, his family has took a tremendous hit. I can imagine. And, yeah. and, and, and people are out there just, you know, trying to make it about them and bring, you know, bring this man's legacy down and, and his memory down. I, I think people need to love more and, you know, stop trying to uh, you know, garner the eyeballs of folks just for your own general purposes. Let the let the people mourn and and have their moment. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying, man. It's it's so easy to like empathy on the internet, though. Like it's so easy to just be like, nah, I'm just gonna share this link, share this conspiracy that I is founded on nothing, oh, God, yeah. but speculation, and just put it out there because I know it's gonna give me clicks, mm-hmm. it's gonna give me attention. It's crazy. Um. For, I think when any celebrity dies, it makes us think um, and hopefully appreciate our own the, the transience yeah. of our own lives and our family's lives. And I know my sister, who I don't know if she was a Lakers fan or not. I mean, she's not. She's more into sports than I am. But she said she was crying. She was so emotional. I felt the energy. Yeah. I felt the energy that people around me were in pain. And I also knew that I could not go on my Facebook timeline. So I wasn't even a mess. fan, but I felt. A certain kind of way, like I, I saw it. I, I was Sunday morning. I, I was watching <clears throat> Power. I think Power just went off when I was sitting with my wife, and I was like, "Whoa!" Like I saw it come across, and I told my wife, she was like, "Stop!" Mm-mm. The internet always right, killing yeah. internet yeah. always yeah. killing yeah. somebody. She was like, "What's the source?" And I when I told her the source, she was like, "Oh!" And it inst- instantly we, you know, the here's the thing, man. You are not promised tomorrow, and it don't matter what your station right. is, what people think your station is, what you think your station is, what your mama and daddy think about you, what the enemy think. It don't matter. Death comes for us all in the same way. You, that's the only promise you got. You ain't staying here forever. No. Right? So you should treat your life with you know that same regard. Live every day to the fullest. Live every moment like it's the last and Try to be good to the people that you love and care about every single day because sometimes it's the last time. Yeah. That one time, it'll be the last time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been, I've been honestly off a little bit ever since I heard the news. You know, just not in that good frame of mind. You yeah, know, yeah. Something just at the back of your head, you know, nagging at you. But, um, you know, it's hard for me, especially since his daughter was on, on the flight, yeah. too. Man. Oh, man, that was, a, that was the that that was thing. I really thought it had to be yeah. fake news. I was like, so y'all gonna get a daughter, too. Like, y'all, yeah. y'all been. It's so sad, man. But, um, you know, uh, he lived, he lived a, outside of seeing his daughters grow up and stuff, he lived a pretty full life, very, very good life, um, you know, for all that he accomplished. But there was still a lot more for him to do. For sure, but like we that, say that, man. we we mourn for us yeah. right i look at i look at it this way you know energy is transient like you said the man is not gone he's just not in this plane of existence anymore Agreed. Right? and so we mourn the fact that we can't see this person we can't talk to them and get the answers that we might want but if you are if you're a believer if if you believe if you if if you believe in any kind of higher power, you should understand that you know it's not the end. This is this is just a temporary state, yeah. right. and we should celebrate that. Yeah, you know, even though he wasn't surf- suffering, he's living a good life. You know, he's been relieved of this earthly realm and 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 able to go on and prepare a place for the rest of his family and do other things. So. Right. You know, we mourn for us because that that person's not here with us. We never gonna see Kobe hit another shot. But we should celebrate in the life that he lived and, and the fact that, you know, he's moved on to another place. And that energy still can, should still be carried on through us. Absolutely. So what we so want to do. Shoot so. your Kobe shot and call it out. Shoot your hey, Kobe shot. Hey, that, was cool. that. that was cool when you saw those people shooting Kobe shots, like, in the trash can. 
Oh yeah, that was yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah that was... I think it actually started with Dave Chappelle. Yeah, I think it did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who, was, who may still be, but who was in Columbia last night? He's in Charleston tonight. He's in Charleston. He's in Charleston, Charleston, in Charleston tonight. tonight. Yeah. So, um, more people: Marcus Grant, Martel Banks, Ebony Harvey, Ross Martin. Martin. Uh, Martin. What's up, Martel? Indiana Yalik. Yeah, Martel. Martel, go ahead and speak your thoughts on Tyler Perry because we know you hate him. <laughs> This is with an N on my status about Tyler Perry. On a side note, I think they should change the logo to Coke. Also, but I don't think it's gonna happen. But I mean, it would be dope. <laughs> yeah, they're not gonna. They might not. <laughs> the Redskins won't even stop calling themselves the Redskins. Like you think they're gonna? <laughs> you think the Lakers gonna? Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Special guest, Mister Doctor. Oh my bad, Do- yeah. Doctor. <laughs> that is Jones in the building. Make sure here. you put that at the front. <laughs> I, was, I was wondering if he was gonna be like, if he's gonna, you gonna, you know, you switch and that now when you go out in public, and people are like, hey, Mr. Um, Jones, Doctor Jones. Yeah, it depends on who they are. Mr. Jones, like PhD. PhD. If I don't, no, 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 no. You put that doctor. I got the bills to say. Oh, <laughs> uh, you want to give the people like a rough general synopsis of what you do? What makes you great? What What do I do? I am a purveyor of film and entrepreneurship. Purveyor. That's a doctor. Uh, <laughs> Um, no, I, I'm a filmmaker at heart. Um, I love to help other people get their businesses together. Um, currently, I, I deal with music as well, so I, I'm, I manage an artist. Um, I help other filmmakers make films. So I'm working on a fellowship with uh, Effie Brown. Um, I run my own company, Fanatic Productions. Fanatic. And uh, yeah, I got. Quite a few irons in the fire. I'm a co-organizer with One Million Cups here in town. Yeah, yeah. Shout, yeah. Out to Million Cups. shout out to One Million Cups and the One Million Cups family. You get one snap. You yeah, get yeah, one snap. You probably I know was, I was a little late. Like, y'all doing the snap. I was like, let me get one in. <laughs> um, I'm a father, a uh, husband. Yeah. Dope, man. Trying to make it happen. How many kids you got? <laughs> this is being recorded, right? Okay. <laughs> Three. Oh, all boys. Oh. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh. <laughs> Monique Jones said, Dr. Thaddeus W. Jones, Jr., my beloved. That is my oh. sister, yes. Yeah. Your actual listen. sister? Yeah, that's my actual sister. Oh, wow. She, I know your sister. Yeah, that's my sister. Yeah, and, and don't let don't let her um, slide. She's she's almost a doctor. Stop being lazy and get that doctor. Go and get the thing, yeah, girl. Now. I can't wait because I know I want to get a PhD. <laughs> Do that thing. So yeah. how did you kind of make the leap from um? I know you did a lot of photography and film work. When you you did a lot of jobs. Stuff. Yeah, I did a lot of jobs. <laughs> lot of jobs. <laughs> how did you make the leap from kind of making that like a hobby to like full on owning a production company? So working with celebrities. It started with the jobs, right? It started with what he was talking about. So See? my <laughs> shut up. It's, it's, it's real. My my. I love my mom and dad to death, but they did not. They was like, look, you can go to school. If we pay for it, you can get a practical job. That's what my mom said, too. And, uh, and so I tried that for a little while. And then, you know, my, my motivating angel, I always wanted to do film, mm-hmm. uh, gifted in town to put a camera in my hand in, like, the sixth or seventh grade. And I was hooked, and I knew that's what I wanted to do. But, you know, trying to please your people. And uh, my grandmother... Mm-hmm. Uh, told me she was like, just go to school and get you know get something practical, but you know work on this on the side. And so I, I was set with that plan. And then uh, she passed away. And when she passed, uh, I you know long story short, I wasn't there. I, I hitchhiked to New York, and I didn't make it in time. So that kind of put me in a weird space. So I didn't go back to school. Ten years, I sat out of school and I did every odd job you could think of. And this whole time I was doing these odd jobs, I would be like, man, that'd be a great film. I was on my bread truck on, man, I'd make a, make a film about this. One yeah. day, this, this is an interesting job. But I was, you know, I went to Job Corps and talking about, you know, how, you know, it was mostly black and brown people in Job Corps. And they was like, well, we're all the white folks. There ain't no white folks here. Why didn't, you know, and I'm looking, seeing all of these different things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, right before my son my oldest son was born um i was at crossroads i had just finished like an associate's degree and i, I, re- I was really trying to get back to new york um and found out i was going to be a dad and that and put me in a weird space and so um you know like how can you tell your children to pursue their dreams if you're not pursuing your dream and 
you know, they maybe feel like a hypocrite, right? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, but then you have to provide. Mm-hmm. And so I still did that, and it made me a miserable person, it made me a terrible person to be around. So I truly apologize to anybody I was dating and seeing. <laughs> at the, I was sorry, a miserable. My exes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, well, I was angry with them. Yeah, yeah, I was a terrible person. Like, I was unhappy. Yeah. Um, but anyway, long story short, because it's already a long story. Um, yeah, I came. I, I moved to Columbia to finish my degree to teach. Um, and a teacher here that was in the media arts said Carl, her name was Carla Berry. She said they were going to film. I was like, this is my opportunity. If I'm going to pay for it, I'm going to do it. It's my chance. <laughs> and came and got into the media arts department and it was not what I thought it was going to be. And so it took me a whole lot of my own research and own kind of perseverance and u- utilizing their cameras to like teach myself. And uh, yeah, I got bit by the bug. And from that point, I was just like, okay, I'm going to figure out how to do this. And only this, only this, I didn't want to do anything else. And so that's pretty much how I started. I mean, PA in and working every little opportunity that I could. You just kind of taking whatever job came for you? Yeah, I, you know, uh, at first I had this real chip on my shoulder, like I'm never pa for anybody. Like, <laughs> how dare you? Yeah. How dare you say I should PA? <laughs> you mean PA like personal assistant? No, like uh, production, no, 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 no. I'm sorry, production assistant. Oh, okay. So the, these are the little gophers little on set, right? Excuse me, I'm the arts. Get those <laughs> <in>. Get those <laughs> <together>. <laughs> They use the gophers on set, like these people that go oh, get your okay. coffee. They go <laughs> run all the errands. They and but they are a integral part of every film production, yeah. no matter what, right? And uh, so I was like, nah. And then I took a couple courses, a little you know workshops. I was like, okay, I might get in. And then I found out they were making like 150 bucks a day. I think it was 110 bucks a day at the time. I was like. Ten bucks. I don't money. make that at a, a a day working at the kangaroo. We're going to get these croissants. Right? <laughs> let me go. On, let me go and get these this Starbucks coffee. What you like, cream or sugar? <laughs> and so I started trying to parlay those days more and more and more. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, I got into like American Idol. Um, started doing that when it came to town. Started doing anything that came to town that was paying. And mm-hmm. I got a reputation for being, I guess, good, and started getting people calling me out the blue instead of me having to apply, so. There you go. Yeah. What are you talking about? And where was this at? Just curious. Here. Oh. This was in Columbia. Uh, but I got called for a lot of stuff that was coming outside of here. So like American Idol would roll into town, you know, once or twice a year. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody, you, you know, you make connections on the set, the producers will remember you if you know your stuff, and they'll be like, oh, we need to get that, that guy that was here last time. That's pretty good. Yeah. How long has this journey been? I moved to Columbia in 2008. Hardest thing I had to do because I had to leave my sons behind. Oh, man. And so it was a crossroads for me. I was like, ah. You know, when when Steve Harvey talks about that whole jump thing, oh, yeah. that was that moment for me. I was like, it, it, I can remember driving down the road because I did not want to leave my, my father uh, left when I was eight. When we have a, you know, we had a, strange relationship for many years and it was better now but i didn't want to do that to my kids and i and, you know i had at that point in time i wasn't i wasn't ish I was, you know i was just a dude trying to <laughs> trying to do the best he could do but people always will say oh, you should, you're so smart you should do this you should do this and i was just like uh <laughs> right and then uh so when i left it was like you know nothing secure i didn't i was going to try and finish my degree i didn't know that i would end up in this spot uh, today and it was just like a, a super leap of faith. Like I'm leaving with nothing. I had I had one check left because I was a um, para pro, so para pro um, teacher's aide, mm-hmm. um, and I had a, a student that I was uh, shadowing the whole day. I had one check left when I moved here, and that was you know when you work over the summer, uh, when you work in the school system, you get checks over the summer, and I had one check left, and that's what I moved here on. And I immediately knew I needed to find a job and, <laughs> and some other stuff. I was still paying child support and all this stuff. So it was like, Ooh. yeah, it was it was real. <laughs> this, it, this journey was 12 years in the making. Yeah, it was real. Wow. 
And I definitely want to ask you about your experience, like officially um, breaking into the industry as a black man. But like, I think what you're speaking on now is just doing what just you just know just feels right. What you're mm-hmm. supposed to be doing. Like, we get so caught up, especially like we all feel like all of us as grown up with parents that like, you know get something stable and do your little stuff on the side. Absolutely. And they don't understand what that little stuff is like. Big stuff for us. It's, it's the stuff for us. But um, when you just do what feels right, when you indulge in that little stuff on the side more and more, whenever you get time and be intentional about you know how you designate your time throughout the day. I think that's what gears you up for that jump. Because I ask people all the time, when did you make that jump? Mm-hmm. Um, you listen to Steve, and Steve sometimes kind of makes it feel like it's easier easier to do than he actually puts on sometimes, in my opinion. But it was think, not easy. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think he sometimes like says it so matter-of-factly, like, you just got to do it. You just got to jump. Well, you yeah. do. I mean, yeah, you, do. you, you yeah. do just have to jump, and it's never going to be a perfect time. When I was leaving, dude, I had no money. I had a, I had a beat-up car. I didn't know if it was going to make it. I didn't have a whole lot of anything. Like I was eating out of the Dollar Tree. Like that's that's my meals consisted of what, frozen dinner, like frozen it? meat what? out the Dollar Tree. Like I remember it was a big deal. I was like, oh, they selling steak in here now. I can get a steak for a dollar. Well, you still alive, boy? It, <laughs> listen, man. well, I've been homeless too. I was eating out of trash cans at one point in time, so it really wasn't. It really was the Dollar Tree meal. Wasn't dollar that Tree bad. was a step up, like. Um, listen, I tell you my story, you wouldn't believe. So I've done a lot chasing these dreams. I've done a lot of stupid stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know what? You got to keep picking yourself up. Like so, I jumped early, and and in the music, I was into music, and um, and I had a group. I was with a group called uh, Rival. It was Ritual Incarceration Verbal Apostle Legion. Absolutely. Yes. Listen. Somebody y'all, was like, Yo, y'all we, was like we, we about to kill yeah. 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 How you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, shout out to my man. I can't. Oh man, I can uh, He changed his name, but I'm just calling his, his old governor. John. Shout out to my man, John Sanders. Out yeah, John Atlanta. Sanders. Uh, but yeah, he he put the group together, and I was a poet um, mm-hmm. when I started. I was not thinking about rap. I was thinking about like. This girl that you know, yeah, yeah, this girl yeah, that I had yeah. the biggest crush in the world on, and I was just like, I'm gonna write her some poetry. <laughs> yeah, we'll call that's the, always the how it starts, doesn't it? Yeah, and then that that poetry turned into anger when it, you know, my love wasn't re- requited. So, yeah. <laughs> so now I'm a bitter poet. Now I'm a bitter poet. <laughs> so, yeah. So I have a question from the chat. So Cicely asked Michael, "When you gonna, when are you gonna make that jump?" I feel like I'm already making the jump. Uh, well, oh, talking about fully transitioning to uh, my you, entrepreneurship. You, you safely. I am safely. safely look, I ain't. Joke. I will admit to you, I ain't financially prepared to make the full jump yet. You never prepared, but I'm never saying prepared. I, Just I, I do know. Now, <laughs> so, Listen, it, it, you'll know. You'll know. You'll know your time. I'm gone because <laughs> I my last job was at Amazon mm-hmm. here in Columbia. Last job, and I remember I knew it was time. Cause I was looking out the window, going, I could just jump and hit this highway. <laughs> Ooh. The actual jump, and and the actual like I could be, I could end it. I was that's how miserable I was. Yeah. Right. I felt like I was on Amazon a plantation. Yeah, uh, and I called my wife. I was like, Look, I, don't I don't know what we're gonna do, but I ain't working. No, no, no. I was just like miserable, and she was like, You just quit. Mm-hmm. If you like, we'll make it work. We'll figure it out. Just. Just quit. And you had a partner, so that's very yeah. important. Very important. It's, uh, it's important to have a support system, like because yeah. I had never had a person in my life, so shout out to my wife, who was yeah, wow. ride or die. Like She was like, listen, no matter what, we gon- we got this. Well, she didn't want to lose you. <laughs> and she <laughs> was just like, that, right? <laughs> I, I didn't tell her I wanted to jump. She probably felt just, it in your yeah, voice. She's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, need to go. She, she definitely felt it in. I mean, the end, because it's like, if I'm, if I'm upset and miserable, the whole room feels it, mm. and yeah. so like my household was like, and then it, it didn't help. I was like, I was working nights. I was up in the daytime. I was finishing working on my PhD, mm. and so I was doing all of this at the same time. And like I had a newborn, and it was, it was a mess. Yeah, so feeling that. Yeah, um, I study. I always try to do too much. That's that's. Nah, I feel that. Though. <laughs> I haven't felt the full push to like that. I'm at the ready point where I. I'm so consistent with the business that I can live off a of full time. But I definitely feel what you're saying. I felt the push out of my this old place me and Will used to work at. We ain't gonna say the oh, name because just in case we want to sponsor something <laughs> someday. But um, I felt you the push know. to get about of there for sure, and that's what drove me back to school. So I feel like it's similar to that. 
But you know, the push will happen. So here's the thing. As you move into your business, you only gonna make the if as long as you're comfortable, see nothing grows from comfort. So as long right. as you're comfortable, that's, that's exactly. all the money you ever gonna make because you exactly. ain't got no need to to really my business didn't start to grow until I was like, okay, I got I I got lights due, I got rent due, right. something got to happen. Right. And then the universe started to align things up because I was putting that in yeah. yeah. That desire was much stronger, much more intense at that time. Everybody, when you care about your life, your body finds a way to live. It so, will. It will. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come together. And that's where the jump comes in, right? right? Because it'll never be perfect. It'll You'll never feel comfortable enough to be like, mm. I, I need to make this jump, right? right? But you'll know the feeling like, because you'll go back and forth with yourself. Ah, I could, I could quit now. And, and yeah, I got a couple of things. Like, you're going to do that yeah. back and forth before you really, either you're going to get tired of the back and forth and something will happen and your impulse will make you jump. Right. Or you're gonna try to reason it to death. Ah, yeah. oh, this is not the right time. You just need a couple hundred more. So you convince yourself over yeah. and over until you. But when in actuality, the jump just needs to happen, so you can so you can put that energy into making whatever it is you're trying to make grow grow. Absolutely. So as a, so as an entrepreneur, or somebody who let's say you have somebody come to you and say, Hey man, I really tried to do this da 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 da, you know, and I failed, you know. What am I supposed to do now? I still got this dream, but go a little down on board and plan it. Like a lot of people fail because they fail to plan. You know what I'm saying? They they didn't plan what they were gonna do. Like I'm not saying jump without a parachute. <laughs> like, roll your parachute up, learn how to properly roll it. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> Stuff it in the bag. Mm -hmm. When you get to the cliff, then you can jump, right? Learn how learn how to do everything you need to do to jump. Right? But people think that. People think that Steve's saying get to the edge of the cliff with no parachute and just hope that somebody else is gonna come by with a parachute. That's not that's not the deal. Right. Prepare yourself. Learn the business that you want to go into, whatever it is. Educate yourself on what it takes to be in that business. But don't set yourself up for failure by just going out there willy nilly. You ain't you don't know the business. You don't know the climate. You don't know the cost. It's so much other stuff that you don't know and you're jumping out there. Now you're going to add that you don't have a steady client. You don't have steady income. You, your bills are due. Your rent is due. You're going to add all these things in on top of all the other stuff that you don't know. Right. That's what I did the first time. And so that, the doing. only reason I know that is because I did it. How do you think I end up homeless? Like I did that. So sad. And then you already yeah. asked my question I was going to ask, which is like, what is the biggest mistake people make when starting a small business? The lack of planning, man. We just get, you know, as creatives or as business minded people or just people who just want to do something big, you just get ambitious, you get full charge, you watch the YouTube videos, you're like, I'm going to go ahead and just make this shit happen. Mm -hmm. And you just start doing stuff that's getting you paid or some type of, you know, attention online or in person or whatever. You just start doing these things. Next thing you know, you just scatterbrained. You just out here just all over the place and not making no real money. And yeah, have a plan in place for what you think you want to do because that's going to change. Right. So have a plan in place for the things you think you want to do. Right. Have a have a and I don't say I don't want to say a plan B because there's no plan B, but have a derivative of plan A. If things go sideways and you're still driving towards this goal, it's not plan B. You're still headed towards the same direction. I just might need to move a little bit different. So like you mentioned when we talk about business plans before the show, it's it's a living thing. Yeah. Your whole business plan, your whole motivation is a living thing because you're a living thing. Absolutely. So it's gonna change every day, every hour, every minute, every second. Especially when it comes to business. I'd love for you to take that into account. When we have some people who join, can I shout them out? Gregory Jones Jr. Oh yeah, single film. He said what to do family, but he said it like ten hours ago. Kept talking. Taryn joined Richard. What's up, Richard? Um What's up, Kayla yo? Latrell and Josie. You gotta give a special out. Josie, you miss that blue note, man. You were missed that blue note. I literally said that out loud. I was <laughs> like, this night is missing Jones. It really is. It was a magical night, but it would have been more magical if your black ass was in the <laughs> um, <laughs> you want to get into this black representation? Talk? Go ahead, man. Go ahead. So, kick it off. With you being a filmmaker, mm -hmm. you know, all star out here, um, what do you think about the current state of black representation in film and television? Do you think that 
it's gotten better with movies like you know Black Panther being as huge as it was, um, Insecure being other than some parts of the last season being amazing. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. Oh, shit. Get that light skin nigga out of here. That tour of LA episode. Get that light skin nigga out of here. I just want to make them completely clear. Oh, we, we I love you. Damn near worship you these days. We do. We really do. There's a whole generation. Um, you. With Netflix doing this whole, um, you know, black creators movement that they started um, mm-hmm. last year. Do you think it's gotten better or are we oftentimes still kind of muddled in the same stereotypes? and? I think that the people that write the checks are limiting us uh, to what they feel comfortable with us doing. Mm. That's the first thing. And so we're not, there's not enough of us writing checks for the next Spike Lee, the next Issa Rae, whoever, right? Mm -hmm. So that we don't have, we don't have the purse strings. So that in and of itself keeps the same kind of stereotypes running through the system. Um, though that's better than nothing, right? We, we're, we're, we're slowly making a climb um, that I think should be accelerated by some of the people that are already uh, well achieved, like a Tyler Perry, like a Oprah Winfrey. Mm-hmm. They had the, you know, they had the ability to really um, speed this process up, right? Um, but what I'm, what we're finding is that, you know, it's not happening. There's not a lot of, or at least there's not a lot of eyeballs on uh, black creators behind the camera, mm-hmm. as far as directors. Uh, writers, right? I mean, this whole thing with Tyler Perry, who has the the who could have uh, used his platform as an opportunity to empower black writers, to empower black directors into the fold, train them up the way he would have. He thinks they should do whatever it is they're doing, um, and we're not seeing that. What we're seeing is Tyler Perry saying, "Hey." I write all my own stuff. <laughs> now he did right? say that he did say that he's used writers before. Uh, I guess unionized and non-unionized, mm-hmm. and it didn't work out. Well, <laughs> That's I such mean, a big so he never tried it again. <laughs> I, mean, like, right. I mean, of course, there was more depth to it, but I'm just he, he just well, didn't like what they did, so he fired. Get out! Right. I'm not doing myself again. We talked about this. The entertainment business is a business, right? And so you you got to be able to see some kind of return. But I think that. The problem is nobody. Everybody wants their money back tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It's like being. It's like being. A, it's like being a dope boy, and you get front of the package. They, they want their money back tomorrow. But do you think that stems from like the limited resources that a lot of us have? Like we don't have time. It's just like people living in poverty don't feel like they have time to learn about investing. They just need money like tonight. I think the scarcity of resources does produce a a panicked effect. Right. And that's why we we definitely need folks that don't have the scarcity to be the leading of the charge Mm -hmm. for folks like, you know, us that want to get into the industry. Mm -hmm. But I think that also you need to be willing to make the sacrifice to put together a body of work that stands on its own. And so if you're out there claiming you want to make films, but you're not you're not learning the right ways, you're not trying to get to the right ways to do it, then, of course, they're going to overlook you. Because you ain't, you're not prepared. Surface level. Right? Again, you you working on, again, you working on the surface. And believe you me, the the technology has made everybody want to be a filmmaker. Oh, I can just go get a DSLR. But they don't know how to move the camera. They don't know how to uh, composite a shot. They don't know how they're going to edit it. They want to take, they, everybody wants to get their cell phone and make a film. And it's, it's, I mean, yeah, you have the technology. But if you don't know how to use it, there was a, Around Christmas time, iPhone did a commercial, right? Where it's like all this is shot on the iPhone. Right. What they don't show you is that this guy's a professional film director. <laughs> yeah. He's using he's using dollies and grips, and he's got a full right. crew. And you're out here in the dang on snow <laughs> with you and your iPhone and your kids. Yeah, like, baby, do it like they did it. Do it like they did it in the commercial. On the ground up, right? <laughs> no, 
<laughs> you know, in, in any that's business. So, that's so important. I feel like you mentioned that too, that applies to the whole business thing. Like everybody's just like, don't get the LLC. There's so many memes like, buy that LLC girl. But it's like, well, but then what? But then what? <laughs> See, like, like me and Star were talking for your guy. Like, it's like you, you have access to all these resources online, these YouTube ch channels, these these free trials, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. They just spew information at you, like, do this, do that, this is what you need, this is what you need, but they don't really tell you. Here's you need key. somebody hands-on with you to tell you how to use this stuff. Information is great, but if you can't apply information. That's what I'm saying. It's just gonna be just a bunch it's of- It's just a bunch of stuff in your head. So you gotta learn how, and, it, and one of the things you can do is shadow somebody. You're not sure, find somebody you think is sure and, and shadow that person. I mean, it's just like any other trade. If you are a barber, they don't just, Turn you loose with some clippers. Oh, you ain't gonna go sit in somebody's chair. They be like, I watch all these YouTube tutorials. I'm gonna cut your head. No way. Bruh. <laughs> right? Bruh. Hey, bro, you ain't get the hell away from I've me. I've been watching. No, 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 no. It's good though. I've been I watching. I don't give a shit. I do this. The chair always empty in the shop. You can just walk right. in. Hey, come on, on bro. You yeah, 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 yeah. I got. There's a reason your chair is empty right now. <laughs> right. But but we expect something different from other trades. We expect to be able to do that with film. We expect mm -hmm. to be able to do that with writing. We expect to be able to do that with advertising or marketing or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's nothing is different about that. You can go on YouTube all day and watch all this. It does not make you an advertising executive. It does not make you a creator. That's what I'm saying. Wow. People it's sobering words so to us creatives out there. So when you were so when you earlier when you were talking about the scarcity resources mm -hmm. um and talking about uh like Oprah and Tyler Perry should be you know, investing in these projects to make more, I guess, diverse things mm -hmm. happen for us. Do you feel like maybe their resources maybe aren't enough to produce something that black people are involved in that will get a, a return on their investment? Oprah took her money to Africa and, and, and made a school. Oh, got so they, they, she can't tell me she couldn't do it here if she wanted to. She chose, she made a choice. And if you find what I find is that people are making choices that make them look good on a, a scale globally versus right here at home. See, ain't nobody championing black folks here, right? We we talking about different countries in Africa with scarcity, but the, you know, most people don't even realize that Africa is a continent and not a country. There are many countries in Africa, right? Right here, you got people in your state, down the street, sleeping on the street, or down the street, striving to try and be filmmakers, be whatever, and you walk over them and see something else down the road and give that money to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Tyler Perry is doing tremendous things out here in his studios, but I think, and, and again, this is any, Anybody who has a lot of resources, they always want more. But then you have to structure it in a way that really gives you the most bang for your buck. He's not, that's what I feel he's not doing. Oprah's not doing. A lot of people that have the resources are do, aren't doing it. I think that um, again, and I'm biased because I'm I'm I you know have I'm working with um, Effie, Effie Brown in the background of, of doing some stuff with, with her and she definitely is doing what we're talking about. She's seeking, right? She's seeking talent, whether it's black, brown, uh, women, right? Queer, straight, whatever. Underrepresented minorities that would not get the opportunity to do a film on that level. That's what these other folks should be doing. You should be seeking and not, not they're so reactive. Even but if it's, if, oh, I was going to say, but if we're talking about bank for our buck, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Tyler Perry is bank for his buck. Mm -hmm. I would say he's getting the most out of it. Maybe not investing in his community, mm -hmm. but as far as just monetarily, you of know, his shows is. are highly viewed, you know, this, that, and the third. My thing is this. You've got the ear of the people, but you ain't giving the people nothing but the same show over and over and over again. In but they, they watch you, though. That's right. That's right. And they're not watching this. I mean, they connect with it, you know, but to right. them, it's good. Now, the question is, when do you, as the purveyor, start to prepare your people for the next thing? Or do you continue to ride that out and say, oh, I'm good. 
So I'm not I'm I'm not worried about your welfare. I'm good as long as you continue to buy. I'm gonna continue to sell. I think that's the road he's taking. But I will say, I think it's running out with this last movie and how much people have like ripped it apart. Mm -hmm. The fall from grace. Yeah, I yeah. think this might be. If anything in the world could, this might be what makes him be like, all right, let me get some writers. Let me try something different. No, let me do. It won't because because. <laughs> Yeah, you got the right to no, but he also said he's going to start using. He also said he has writers for new shows coming up this year. And so, that's I think that's more of a response to the backlash that little bit of backlash that he yeah. got. But here's the here's the key: as long as people are still spending their dollars to see and go and Tyler Perry this and that, he has no reason to do anything different. Well, I'm saying if those dollars start to go down, though, yes. And I don't know the sales, I don't know the stream numbers, mm -hmm. but if those numbers start to go down, it's going to force them to shift. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, if that's, 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 that's what the studio is for. You know, I don't know exactly how he's utilizing the studio. I don't know if it's only for his own shows or what. I, don't I, know I would who, assume it's not. I don't know. If I think it's, doubt it, this, the best way we can, especially representation, is if you want to see something different on the screen, then you got to get some people different behind the camera. And that's what that's I'm saying. Amazing. I think, like I said, if anything in the world, if this doesn't change it, then I don't know what will. But the way people have feel like, I feel like universally, people have caught on to like how bad his work can be, for those who, who even like liked him as a person and his speech and how empowering it was. Even those people were like, "Yo, Tyler, this shit is not good." And I didn't watch it. I'm not speaking my opinion, mm. but I think like with the consistency being so widespread. And, you know, a lot of people just like to just rag on something, period, even if they yeah. see themselves. Yeah. I think if anything can make them change, it could be this thing. I think it's a brilliant plan as far as how he, he came into the business, right? I mean, he, he hooked a, a whole group of people, mm -hmm. and they've been riding with him from, from then on, right? Yeah. But, again, at some point, where's the responsibility lie for you as a content creator? And I know for me. I choose to make films that speak to people where they are so that we can start to expand that thought process. And I feel that a thousand percent. And that's what I was most conflicted about because I'm the same way. My worst fear as an artist is being cliche or corny. Like if I, it takes me forever to present something because <laughs> I have to, like I'm very rarely impressed with something I make, like right the first time I make it. So that's how I know how you work. But like I'm conflicted because I know also as an artist, it is hard enough to get people to pay for art. So when they finally do start paying, you want to make sure that keeps happening no matter what. You gotta ride them. So he's like, <laughs> that's, that, you know what that is? That's, that's, wheels fall off. that's insecurity. A, that's what I'm saying. So that's why I, I'm conflicted about the whole thing. I hate everything. I shouldn't say hate. I hate <laughs> a too. lot of, you know, I look at my work and can catch all the flaws that I right. have. And so, you know, and I, Compared again. I have flaws, guys. <laughs> Okay. Um, and so, <laughs> besides the wigs, besides, besides the only downfall. perspective, right? And so, like I, like I said before, you know, you have to have a balancing act, um, you know, because there are some people that are completely opposite. Everything they make is great and they can't see the flaws in anything, Tyler Perry. So, <laughs> you know, it's perfect. The blacks will love this. Somebody <laughs> says, I love the blacks will love this. Um, Y'all got something. Um, we had a um, comment, I think, about Tyler Perry. Then I wanted to ask the last. Um. Yeah. So, how do you know? First of all, because I'm not feel the audience inside Tacola me. Tacola Joe said concerning Tyler Perry, the issue of having all your hands in the pot, writer, director, producer, etc., causes you to lose objectivity. Sometimes it's a scene in his work, which is basically you know a lot of times seen in his work. That's sure. what y'all already said. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Um. So with that in mind, um. To what extent? So you talk about somebody like Tyler Perry or Oprah Winfrey, who you say like should, and I agree, who should be more concerned about you know supporting the community because they have the wealth to do that. Um, but to what extent should we support like black art and entertainment? Do you believe in supporting black work even if you're not even actually interested in the product, even if you know the quality isn't there 100? percent Do you believe in still like supporting it? Or you I give everybody a shot, right? Um, I, I'm going to use like restaurants, for example, mm -hmm. right? I will go to a black owned restaurant, boom, have a good experience, whatever. I'll try it again, have a good experience. But what we have a lot of people do is they go one time, they ain't got their stuff together and right. immediately, oh, I see, this is why we don't support black businesses. And, and they, but you don't do that when you go to a white business. 
when you go to a white business, you give them you give them an opportunity. No, 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 no. I, I, I know, but I could, I could mose the fuck off. <laughs> Oh, Moses is disgusting. Come on, they need to clean up that little bar where all the condoms. I don't be looking at all that. Bro, Moses, bro, Moses give me good stuff. Some time, them niggas is dead to me. (laughs) (laughs) Like Best Buy. That's that fucked up. I had a recent incident with Best Buy. I paid for a warranty. Um, When I went back to to exchange the product, they said they didn't have it in the exact product in stock. I went to the shelf and found the exact product. Oh. The only thing that was different was they changed the SKU number. Oh, no. Them. That ain't my problem. That's what I said because I paid for the warranty. Just exchange it. Like, it's the same thing, right? The only thing that changed it, you know, they told me that, oh, well, there's nothing we can do. We can give you a credit, blah, blah. I said, okay, that's cool. Not in that not in that calm tone either. Um, because she's but. Scared. Yeah, you can catch his fade outside. <laughs> no, but um, but I said okay. But I spend a ton of money in Best Buy. Right. A ton of money. So I'm not spending any money with Best Buy anymore. Mm. The point is that if you want something to change, you have to do it with your dollars. Now I'm only one person, mm-hmm. right? But if enough of us stop doing right when we're treated wrong in a place and stop supporting, but we don't. Most of us continue to go back and fight the system, try to fight their system. You know, how many times you don't got something yeah. from someplace and you still in the same spot giving them your dollars? Like no. A quick rain on Facebook and then you right back in there. Right. Mm-hmm. You, right. Right back in there. So, no, we have to start being more selfish with our dollars. Right. And if we want our businesses to succeed, we have to be willing to give that opportunity mm-hmm. to other, to our own people. Right. Right. If I would rather give a black business a second chance than give Best Buy a second chance. They give a white business the first chance. <laughs> if possible. Well, well, is there a black owned what are you buying you're buying electronics? Is there a black owned electronics store though? I mean I don't know of one here. I, I don't know one. I'm I, listen, I've been dealing with the devil after the, uh, <laughs> Amazon. Uh after oh, yeah. after after um uh, Best Buy. Like I just you know you, you find other ways to get what you need, but um I'm not going back to Best Buy. Yeah, you know, uh, it's it's just what it is. It was overpriced in the first place. They always Best overpriced. Buy Everything Ooh. overpriced. Why did you decide Best Buy versus buying online? You just like to see what they. What I they am a uh, listen. My wife will tell you. I go into Best Buy and I come out with stuff when I didn't even need anything. Okay, that's, so that's, you know, that's, that's, your, like, can, that's your toy yeah, store. Yeah, that's my toy store, right? And so I go in there and you know buy movies or camera gear or GoPro or drone or whatever. I'm going in there like they got me. I ain't never went to the store and came out with a drone. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, 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 I done bought three drones from Best Buy. Three. Oh, and crashed every last That's one. That's the one you tried to return? Like, we ain't got no, this. One, one this. Full, no, I was trying to check a, record, uh, a, a controller for a PlayStation 1 for my son. Oh. But like one drone flew away. I went and bought another one. The other one crashed until the end of the long story. Crazy <laughs> stuff. But I think for supporting black businesses, we have to be willing to to give our own people the benefit of a doubt because just like you're starting a business and you might not have all your stuff together and you want somebody to to listen be a little patient with me while i'm trying to get that together right now in the same breath you can't be the owner of the business with all this attitude just eat, just eat the ribs just eat the ribs the way it is that's I mean, how it, it isn't when you know brooklyn jamaican um yeah. food spots like they really don't care they don't care. and it's not just Jamaica. i'm just saying like it's, they really don't care about customer service right. in certain areas. But you, like, but you will be like, okay, well, I ain't coming back here. Yeah. Sometimes the chicken be so. But sometimes good. the chicken be so good, you be like, <laughs> I, I know, I know, foo foo, but just give me the chicken. Right, right. You know? But the, and then more important than anything, just have your ducks in a row, man. If you actually out here calling yourself a business, and I know the, the saying the word business is such a hot word right now. Everybody like, I got my own business, da 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 da. But like, make sure you got everything in order. Because me, and you was talking on the phone about people start these things and. Not even have like an LLC, for example, to just protect themselves in case something goes wrong. You come out here, just out here selling food. Somebody mess around, get food poisoning, get sick, come for your stuff. Grand opening, grand. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And since you didn't have the LLC set up right, I'm gonna sue you for your house, your car, any wages that you might have access to. Give me the, give me the baby rings and the number one mom (laughs) pendant. 
we want it all. Like, I mean, but can I just, if they don't have an LLC, that's on them, though. I mean, it's not going to stop them from be, giving you great service. No, we're saying, no, like, like, just protect yourself. Yeah, like, protect if you're yourself. a sole proprietorship, you're opening up your whole personal finances yeah. to being sued. If you have an LLC, they can only, and, and the other part about that is, is there can be no commingling of funds. So some people get an LLC, but they put all their money in one bank account. You just voided your LLC. Right, right. So how long do you have to do that before it's voided? Because, uh, you know, I'm just asking for a friend. Do it. Just a friend, do it. <laughs> just, just, get next hour. just get a separate bank account. Yeah. It can be at the same bank. And a lot of times, a lot of banks, when you have one account, they will be gladly open you a business yeah. account. And then you can pay yourself. That way you can transfer. You can write yourself a check. All this other stuff. So take care. Take keep your business funds in one account. Yep. Your personal funds in another account, and don't mingle the two. If you need to pay yourself, then pay yourself, and then pay your personal out your personal account. Write a check for yourself. Yeah, do what yeah, you need to do. Good. Yeah, just have your stuff in line, man, and just make sure you can fulfill the promises you're making. Mm -hmm. Don't get caught in the moment. And that's part of like, you know, right now, you can write a small mini business plan just so you know what you're willing to do. Because I'll tell you, and the beautiful thing about starting your own thing is like, once you catch this fire, like it happens quick. And when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and people start, you know, that's paying attention. People, people not ready for the scale up. That's what I was just about to say. Yeah. You got to scale everything. Yeah. When it hits, like you keep saying that you wanted to hit. But it's yeah, you got to be prepared for that because what's going to happen, and I hate to keep using restaurants, but that's the most common thing you see around here. Is people, it's nothing worse than you got a popping spot, right. but they always out of food, bro. Right. They always out of chicken. When you come to the spot, they all you serve is chicken, <laughs> but that you out of chicken. Happens. That happens. I know it's happened. I, it's happened to me. No jerk chicken. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me <laughs> that this all you serve is chicken? That's correct, sir. And out of all the things sideways that you serve, you're out of the main thing you know for. That's correct. Why are you still open? Yeah. <laughs> letting so, people in the door. Right. You letting people inside. Yeah. Now I'm pissed because I came in. It's stressful. And wanted to think about Now when I tell my friend, because this is what happens. Yeah. You tell your friend about it. <laughs> um, you know, someone's uh, stars um Jamaican restaurant ran out of chicken girl. What? I'm looking at my life. Well, my name on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nicola Jones says, concerning black businesses, people should also be willing to pay the price for the services and goods without trying to haggle them down. Yeah, Ooh, please, please don't. Never please never please do not ask well, people. Let me, let me. I don't have one. But I, can't stand, <laughs> I can't stand seeing Negroes do it, though. Bro, it's aggravating this shit. And the first thing you go to Walmart you and you pay whatever they put on you the You ain't shelf. never in your life asked Walmart uh, for a discount. That's shit. When you have Walmart for a discount? It's different shit, let it be the last one. No, it should yeah, not man. be different on services. Here's the thing, and I'm a service industry, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't know the ins and outs of what it takes. Most people, okay, for photography, for instance, perfect example. People talking about the photography. Come people that. think that. I might have a hard time. It's the truth, though. When you show up, I take pictures, and you think that that's the end of the day. That's not Oh, you took the pictures? Okay, I can get the pictures, and we're good. No, I got to take those pictures back. I gotta edit those pictures. I gotta load them in. I gotta catalog them. I gotta. Leave. You're not getting all the trash pictures. I take a hundred pictures to give you one good or whatever that that instant is. So it's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Right. You're right. To make it right. Because people do that all the time. People just say, "Can you?" People will literally hit you up thirty minutes before an event. Yeah. Like, can you can't take them take the pictures. Or they know you're coming to the event. Hey, can you bring your camera with you? Oh, to... yeah. oh man. Oh, I, I, oh, that's why I stopped. <laughs> no, no offense to anybody out there, but that's why I stopped going to events. All offense. Oh, okay. I stopped going to events because the people oh, knew okay. I no, They don't want to hire me. They don't oh, but no. but they at, least will, they, at least they wanted to pay you at the last minute. No, no, no. They're not, no, they're not talking about they paying at all. They're like, oh, you, gonna, you coming out tonight? Yeah, I'll be out there. Can you bring your camera? No. no not, uh, why? Cool. You want to learn about cameras? I. I, no, not even, at all. Even that cost. Sure. Even that yeah, cost because I teach cost. at Midlands Tech. My, okay. At, 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 if you want to, if you want to take class, that's a, so you I'm teach that class? Okay. Yeah, I teach photography and videography at Midlands Tech. I had no idea that was you. I would change my whole plan. My Come on down. Here doing <laughs> IT. <laughs> <laughs> I've never suggested anything in my entire life. Yeah, man. Like, but the whole fact that you bring your camera out in the first place is a whole liability because if I come to your event. I don't know what kind of event it is. People in there dancing. Somebody, somebody knocked my shit over. 
I didn't say she would. Well, die. I have insurance, so that's Even still that's a whole thing. It's, it is a it's a pain. I actually was on a shoot one time and somebody actually knocked my camera over and you while on the shoot. Off, right? I wish I could, but I was in my fanatic production shirt, and so okay. the business would have been liable. So I handled it as a businessman. I, I went to the people and was like, <laughs> "He hit the friends, son." <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need like, yo, son. Yeah. I'm gonna need you to take care of this because your people's, you know. And he, and 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 and, and the, the owner of the business, he took care of it. He was a real G. He was like, yo, this business was up. But you always have these kind of instances, especially if you go into a club, you show up and you're doing print on the scene or you're doing something like that. It's always you're taking a risk. You're always taking a risk. Absolutely. Yeah. So get that insurance too. So, Mike, you got insurance? I uh, do my camera. Yeah, after all the nonsense I had with my Nikon, remember I told you I bought a Nikon from uh, I bought a camera from Nikon and it came in broken. Mm, we don't get into that. Yes, I got insurance. Um. Anyway, I got all heated on the thing. So <laughs> y'all can't see it. I'm yet. saucing all the microphones. What I'm doing. So we are gonna get into the black business shout out. I'm sure Will's gonna have you shout out your own business. <laughs> Go ahead and shout out your business, man. Yeah, shout out. <laughs> like, uh, Fanatic like, Productions, that's my business. Word up. You want to give like a quick two minutes? Instagram. Yeah. Instagram is you. Fanatic Productions. Contact me at fanaticproductions at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. uh, www.fanaticproductions.com. I'm branded all across. If you, it's Fanatic with a K, not with a C. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. We awesome. do videos, photography. Uh, Short films, music videos, all that, all that good stuff. So I was in one of this man's films, short films, called Pieces, but a amazing friend, mutual friend of ours, Miss Sandra. Um, absolutely. Watching this man work, and I was just an extra. I mean, I was just, I was a star. You know what I'm saying? I was the extra. Honey. Um, but just watching this man work and just make everybody so comfortable because it was a long day. We got together like hella early, <laughs> and it was an entire thing. And we was on this damn bus. It was a, it was just, just a bus. Uh, actually, it's actually a shuttle, really. Yeah. Um, the entire day, and the way this man just makes people feel comfortable and just explain stuff, and the way he just how operated his crew was like, yeah, I need you to get that one more time, or that was the first take, Drake. You know, just, that was cool, and just like made everything just flow so easily, bro. And made our good friends' um, vision come to life on camera. I'm telling you, excellent work, man. If y'all need work done, videography, photography, whatever. I don't vouch for a lot of photographers because y'all know I do photography and uh. I'm very critical, but this man got you. I, I, I promise you that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I always think about the way you told me how professional he was. I love. I was like, I was in, in awe, just bro. Just done that thing for a while. It's, it's a very beautiful thing. Like the the level of comfort that you had, just like, you know, it just came from thing. seeing a lot of. I I was on a bad set once mm -hmm. um, as a PA. It was actually it was the first thing I was doing as a PA. And a friend of mine got me the job. And it was for this like forty-eight hour film festival, and it was it was terrible. We would stay in a terrible hotel, mm. like they were treating us bad. Like it just wasn't very organized. And we sat down, and I was like, "We can do this so much better." That's when you get and inspired. I we were we were inspired, and that's where it was like, "Yo, from now on, when we do short films, we're gonna treat people a certain kind of way. There's a certain level that we expect," <clears throat> and you know that's. You know, even paying folks at, to show up or uh, feeding them or making sure that everything is explained and they understand what type of day it's going to be. That's what I'm saying. Um, you know, I as a, as the director, I get to cut jokes and, and cut up because I, I hire folks that know their stuff. Right. And so I don't have to be over them going, no, 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 this is overexposed. This is like, I don't have to do that. You know, and that's another thing, partner with people that, you know, know their stuff. Yeah. So that you can learn, they can learn from each other, and you're 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 both growing together. If you're not going to do that, um, if you're all just learning at the same level, then why you grow? Yeah. There's nobody. There's no way for you. You need to be with people that will challenge you. Exactly. You know, to 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 grow and expand. So. Absolutely, man. We appreciate that, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Sure, this man. is uh, this is this is nice. It's the only sec the only second time I've ever been uh, actually interviewed like this. So. It's really? the, most, the most important time, though. So yeah, this is most important. Time. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. We gonna get into the thirst of the week real quick. You wanna pull it up? Yes. See, see, if it's my thirst of the week, you don't go through the effort of already setting up 
the Instagram and everything. So this is your Oh no! Yes. And then you put <laughs> 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 This is my personal yeah. This is Miss Shameless Maya on Instagram. She is um Maya's World. Uh Shameless Maya. Uh her name real name is Maya Washington. Is a creative producer, artist, and you social. Gonna, you gonna let me get her up first. Well, we gotta talk while you're doing the thing. Are you gonna sit in silence? All right, everybody yeah. be absolutely quiet and make it awkward for Will while he, we get to breathe in. <laughs> you can do that if you want to. <laughs> Find a good picture. That's how I do anyway. You can't really see her face in that one. Right. Little, 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 little. Bro, I knock your little ass out. <laughs> let me move out. That's the first time I ever heard anybody call you Will. Exactly. That's how you know it's love. Oh, that's video. My bad. That's video too. All the closies are. Wait, what? That's a whoa, whoa, whoa. Video. Here, here we go. There you go. All right, that's a pretty good picture. She's got Star's glasses on too. That's weird. They have the same glasses? Oh, Star has her glasses. I think having the same glasses oh. as Amanda Seals. Remember she had my the bad. other ones with the. Hey, yeah. Around it. Hey, I'm in good company. Yeah. My I'm in good company. Oh, those are not the same. There we go. Oh, honey. Oh, well, I can't, the screen was on the side. I can't really see. Okay, but they're similar. So, oh, she cute. Maya Washington is a creative producer, artist, and social media personality who shares stories and tips on exploring your interests and ambitions, ambitions unapologetically. Uh, she is also an actress. She's a photographer who has worked with people like Prince and frequently collabs with our other favorite, Shan Booty. Yay, Shan. Um, Yay, but she Shan. mostly talks about celibacy. Which is so different from what? Correct. <laughs> <Right. laughs> like, celibacy in relationships? Yes. Thank you. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell you right now, baby. Mm -mm. Don't even try it. What you mean? My, don't my, even try my it? wife been 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 monitoring it. Don't get no ideas. So. Oh, so, listen. Hey, check out <laughs> Maya. She can give you some good tips. She's yeah. just talking about navigating it, though. Like, just we had a podcast about celibacy here, and mm. you know, it was a really funny part because the guest. Um, Somebody with an angry emoji. <laughs> Who put the angry? Golly! <laughs> Remember when Latanya said, "Um, she told the boyfriend that she was dating at the time that she wanted to be celibate, and he like hung up on her." <laughs> that's that's a, that's a normal reaction. What do you mean? We ain't got nothing else to talk. Terrible. About. <laughs> we ain't got nothing else. You said what? You said, <laughs> that's like I got three kids for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, she's just very very dope and just talking about this. Being your whole self and not apologizing for it, yeah. and just doing what you want to do. Um, she has different tips on not tips, but just videos about that. Uh, she does do like tech tips videos on how to like shoot good YouTube videos and stuff, how to make money with YouTube. Nice. Um, and like I said, Sham, we already know Sham is dope, and so they have really good conversations. So she's a good dude. Man. Listen, I, I can put my thirst of the week. What do you what? My this thirst. Is the official of the thirst of the week. You had a thirst for the year. It's gonna be chocolate, first of all. That's fine. We like chocolate too. The candy. Mm -hmm. I want Tay Noir. I want. Okay. You know, you know what that is? I think so. I think. Hmm. <laughs> before I read the shit. Oh, she, she chocolate. I want Tay Noir. IG model. I want uh, Courtney, okay. Courtney B. Sanders. Oh, okay, we got. You. <laughs> Thank y'all for watching. The show. <laughs> You ready to yeah, we have to try to shut down the female voice. Okay, All that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I own it. It's not okay. He tried to kill it. Uh, yeah, girl. Anyway, oh, she just butt naked in the first of the pictures that come up. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's been. Mm -hmm. just, oh, geez. that is chocolate. <laughs> oh, we can talk about that after the show. We can talk about that after the show. <laughs> All right, stay All tuned right. for Cultivated Ignorance After Hours After Dark. Yeah, we're <laughs> after, 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 overdue for another sex episode. Either. We haven't really yeah. talked about sex that much lately. We need to get that on. Well, that's what my podcast is going to fully be about. Fully. I'm, so. I'm with it. I'm, I'll be the first guest. That's fine. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we want to thank y'all for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? So, um, appreciate y'all. Yeah, thank you again. Yeah, yeah thank you for joining us. Thanks for the knowledge, we'll talk, the nuggets, the jewels. Uh, don't forget to. Sign up for our Patreon. Yes. Uh, Patreon.com slash cultivated ignorance. Yes. Yes. Don't look at me for validation. I have been to the site. I have been to the site. Um don't forget we'll uh, start dropping exclusive content. Uh it's tiered, so if you want sponsorships, mm -hmm. things like that, uh you can sign up for those different levels. Advertise your black business. Um advertise your black business. Black uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can Choose, choose something. <laughs> uh, we're trying to get to 25 patrons, 
So if you can help us out with $5, whatever, it'll be very helpful and very appreciated. So Absolutely. Uh, thank y'all for joining us on this lovely episode. We'll see y'all soon. Peace out, y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. Bye. 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 B